section one. You will hear a conversation about travel. First, you have some time to look at questions one to four. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Good afternoon. The Australia Travel Agency. How can I help you? Good afternoon. I'd like to know some information about trips to different resorts. OK. Can you tell me some of your details first? Of course. What's your occupation? I'm a first-year student. Are you an Australian? No. I'm from New York. So you are American? Yes. What's your full name? My name is Ariel Lee. Tell me your contact number, please. It is 462830095. And my address? No, we just need your contact number. OK. Can you introduce me some attractions? Obviously it varies, but always places of famous main resorts, such as Sydney, Melbourne, or some places like that. Just tour resorts? I mean, does that include other activities? Yes. Besides main resorts, we will arrange for you to enjoy some local refreshments and some special activities. So, how much does it cost? Usually it varies between $20 and $35 per head, depending on the place. And what is the departure date and time? It depends on various tours, but try to keep the departure time fixed. When? 7 o'clock in the morning. And how about the transport? We have a minibus or coach, depending on the number of tourists. May I need a reservation? Yes, you know summer holidays are coming, so I suggest that tourists reserve a seat in advance. Is there a discount for that? I'm sorry, we do not have any discounts during peak season. Now look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen carefully and answer questions 5 to 10. Could you tell me some details of the trips? Yes. The first place is Sydney. That's on the 12th of January. We'll have 25 people in a minibus. Fine. Going to which attraction? We will visit one of the most famous theatres in the world. The Sydney Opera House. Right. You can appreciate and watch an opera there. Really? What's the name of the opera? I'm not sure. Let me check the house's arrangements. And then you can visit the National Museum to know about the history and customs of Australia. Great! In the evening, you can enjoy some local snacks, if you like. Fine. We're going to the Blue Mountains on the 25th of January. Blue Mountains? Is it a blue mountain? The mountain got its name for blue fog. It is usually covered by a blue fog. That's so interesting. Yes, it is a popular place for young men because they are so cool and you can enjoy lots of sports there such as rock climbing, bush walking and bird watching. How many people will go there together? You will take a coach that has about 30 seats. Fine. And the next place is Melbourne on the 10th of February with about 20 people in a minibus. 
What's the resort? You could appreciate the famous Melbourne Church, and maybe you might have a chance to attend a local exhibition, if they hold it as usual. Fine. Do you have some tours to the beach? Yes. One of the most famous coral reefs in the world is the Great Barrier Reef, and we have arranged that on the 23rd of February. I'm looking forward to visiting there. Yes, many people like there. There are some interesting water sports, such as diving, swimming in the water, or just taking a photo of coral. Great. I guess there will be many people. Yes, but our coach is only for thirty people altogether. That's so great. Can you book a seat for me now? Yes, and I will confirm your reference number later by telephone. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I hope you enjoy the trip. This is the end of section one. Now turn to section two. Section two. You will hear a conversation in a bank. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fifteen. Now listen carefully, and answer questions eleven to fifteen. Good morning. I'd like to open a bank account, please. Good morning. What kind of account do you want to open? I'm not sure. Perhaps you can give me some suggestions. I only want to deposit money in the bank and pay all kinds of bills easily. Fine. I've got the application form here. First of all, can I have your full name, please? Richard Lee. Fine, Richard. What's your occupation? I'm studying a doctor's degree now. Although I was a dentist before coming here. Well, so you are a student. What kind of account can you suggest for me? How about a deposit account? What's the difference between that and a current account? There are many differences, such as the interest rate, overdraft, and service, and so on. Fine. I will take your recommendation. Okay, let's talk about the main two account cards of the deposit account. Fine. One card is called the solo card, and the other one is named Mastercard. Which one is better for me? Let me introduce you to some differences of the two cards. Okay. The first one is annual interest rate. Which one is higher? Of course, it is the Mastercard. At present, its rate is five point five percent, but the Solo Card is only two point five percent. Now look at questions sixteen to twenty. Now listen carefully, and answer questions sixteen to twenty. How about the other differences? The service supplied with the two cards. Could you speak specifically? We usually supply internet service and mobile service with all of the cards, of course, including the, the solo card. Yes, I'd like to ask for the service of mobile. And、uh, does Solo Card have an overdraft? I'm sorry, but Mastercard has such a service. Fine. If you want to take more money out of the bank than you have in it, be very careful. You should not do this without the bank's permission, and you will have to pay some charge. Do you mean interest? No. I mean the overdraft charge. 
How much is that charge? According to the bank's rules, the minimum fee is about 2%. Fine. The last item of the two cards is the requirement. There is no limitation of the solo card, but if you want to get MasterCard, you should deposit a minimum sum of £1,500 in the first time. Oh, what's the requirement of money? What do you mean? I mean I cannot deposit cash when I open a bank account. Don't worry. We accept cash and cheque or even money order. Great. So which card did you decide to open? I'd like to open the MasterCard. A good choice. How often would you like to receive your statement? Monthly, please. OK. The last one you should know is the opening time. Banks usually open from 9am until 4.30pm, from Monday to Friday. But most branches open until 3.30pm on Saturdays. OK, I see. Thank you very much. You're welcome. This is the end of Section 2. Now turn to Section 3. Section 3. You will hear a conversation between a student and her tutor about the assignment. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Uh, good morning. Oh, it, it's just hit 12. Uh, good morning, Miss Potter. May I come in? Oh, Jerry, of course. Come in and take a seat, please. Thank you. Well, how about your assignment? Do you mean my paper? Yes. I still think about the draft, but I hope you can give me some help and suggestions. Of course. How long will it take you to finish your draft? Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe three days? My advice is that you should spend a lot of time on your draft. As you know, a good beginning is very important for a paper. A good draft can help you outline your paper and even benefit your argument. OK, I will try my best to write up my work. Uh, Miss Potter... How many parts are in the paper? Generally speaking, there are four parts and references. So there are five parts? Right. Contents, introduction, main body... And conclusion? Yes, and a bibliography. So how about the word limitation of my paper? According to the requirements, you have to write at least 3,000 words and not over 5,000. OK, three to five thousand. Right. How about your research? I haven't begun to do the research. Why? Because I'm not sure about the research method. I mean, I cannot decide to use which one now. I remember I suggested you to use the method of interview. Yes, but I think maybe questionnaire is better for my work. Really? Tell me your reason. I have to spend some time of the day on a part-time job, so I think maybe a questionnaire is a good way to collect the data that I need. Fine. Oh, do you search resources or data from the internet? Yes, I think it's a good way to collect data, and as you know, it can help save lots of time. Jerry, in fact, many students do most of their research on the internet. You might think that it is an easier way to get resources, but most data are from highly unreliable resources, so be critical. OK, I will pay attention to that. Now look at questions 25 to 30.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 25 to 30. Then, there are some things you should consider when you write the paper. OK. Be careful with your references and quotations and do not share other people's work. I mean, you should write clearly about reference books and do not forget to acknowledge the original writers. Otherwise, you will be failed for plagiarism. OK, I've got it. The other point is... Deadline? No. Deadline is the date of handing in your work. You'd better hand it in on time. But if you have a reasonable excuse, you can ask for an extension. Fine. Sorry to interrupt you. That's OK. The other point you should pay attention to is your research data. OK, I will write them clearly. Oh, Miss Potter, could you recommend to me some good reference books about the topic of my paper? Fine. Let's check the reference book list. The first one is Drake Wister's book. Right. What's the title? Global Economy. Is it the one published by the Cambridge University Press? Right. And I think Victoria Smith's book is a good choice. What's that title? The Strategy of Marketing. And which publisher? London Press. Fine. And how about others? The book called The Economics Tendency is a good one for your paper. Really? And the writer and the publisher? The writer is Hilary Justice, and the publisher is Oxford University Press. Can I borrow it from the library? Of course. Great. And the last one that is helpful to your work is the book of William Hanna. How do you spell the surname? H A N N. A. OK. And the title of this book? Business Management, published by Cambridge University Press. OK. But you cannot borrow the book from the library. Why? Because it belongs to the closed reserve. You have to read it in the library. OK. Thank you very much. You're welcome. This is the end of Section 3. Now turn to section four. Section four. You will hear a conversation about a credit card fraud. First, you have some time to look at the questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Hello. In today's programme, we have invited Ken Farrow, Head of Financial Crime at Lloyd's TSB, to introduce some information about credit card fraud. Welcome, Farrow. Thanks, Catherine. Has a chip and pin given new chances for thieves to steal the details of our credit cards? Maybe. In the past, there has been typically 50,000 or 60,000 ATMS in the UK where people's PIN could be collected, and now there's hundreds of thousands of points of sales terminals. It's a fraud where criminals capture details and then make a magnetic stripe card copy. How easy is it to do this? One way is to modify a terminal. So that's what's happening often in the past with cash machines. The same can be done for chip and pin terminals. The other way is to replace it with an entire counterfeit. There have been incidences in America and in Europe with entire fake ATMs being set up. The last way is to set up a concealed camera and have somebody using sleight of hand to swipe your card through another machine so that you don't even need to modify the main machine. If someone decided to set up a little device to modify one of these handheld pin pads, 
How easy would that be to do? Usually it wouldn't be technically too hard. You just need about a hundred pounds to prepare for some equipment and raw parts, but it would take some engineering time and effort. The terminals themselves have a function of tamper resistance. If you try to open the casing, the machines will shut down and make them inoperative. But there's only so much they can do against a persistent attacker, compared with an ATM. Well, once a card is copied and the pin is obtained, crooks can make a fake card and use the pin to withdraw money. Do all cash machines accept these cards in the UK? Cash machines in the UK may not accept these cards, but many machines abroad will. Why? It depends on our radar. We can obviously know what they are doing while criminals can't break the chip at the moment. So what they're doing is to use the old method to skim the magnetic strips on the cards. However, they've realised that they cannot succeed in the UK, so they go on to the continent and to other countries in the Far East and use them where ATMs are not secured for chip use. Right. So they can take the old style card and use it abroad and get the cash out more easily. That's right. There is a magnetic strip attached to the card for customers who are travelling. So, what are you doing about this increase of use in foreign cash machines of cards that have been stolen here? What we're doing is to gradually extend our security blanket. That means we will monitor the card usage, whether it's in the UK or abroad. If we feel there's something wrong, we will contact and confirm with the customer. We're up against organised crime. And organised crime is trying to get one step ahead of us, and we're trying to keep one step ahead of them. Yes. How does security work in UK machines? Because sometimes fake cards will work there as well, won't they? When a bank is looking at its arrangements, it has to balance up convenience to customers with security. Yes. So what are you doing to make things more secure? I think the chip and the pin situation has really improved, and if you look at the figures, in fact, hard fraud has dropped by 24% over the last period. I think you can say this program has done well. Yes, I can see the figures, but there has been a huge amount of coverage in the press this week. Some banks have stopped using pins. Doesn't that decrease the public's trust in this new system? And some people even think the new system is designed for new fraud. I don't think so. I'm not going to comment on particular cases. What I would say is that usually the evidence of crime has always been with the old technology, not with the new. So new technology seems to be working well. That's right. Okay. Thanks for your professional introduction. See you next time. See you. This is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.